I was uh, challenged to um, join the Septandi campaign this year and I do have some Tandy computers but mostly Cocos and something like that so I might do something about that too but I actually got a bit curious so I went ahead and made a, a, a purchase and this is an item that's actually been available on the internet for quite some time and it's not the most common of the Tandy computers and it's not the oldest one Not at all bad packaging and inside you have a vintage computer bag and I can assure you this bag also smells uh, retro uh, not in the good kind of way so I think this has been stored maybe not in the best ways this kind of looks like insulation dust I'm not sure and you can see uh, the Tandy writing down here so let's open the bag and see what's contained within. Ah, more plastic. We are still saved on the packaging and that's good because I hate to see old computers ruined by transportation in the mail. But that's something that has been good taken care of here I think. Yes, and here you can you can see what's inside. This is a Tandy 1400 personal computer LT, and the LT I think stands for for laptop. And there has been placed some accessories here, maybe a forms reader or something. You had these concept holders that you put to put your sheets on, maybe, and nothing more kept inside here and we have the user manual a practical guide to the tandy 1400 lt 1400 lt quick reference guide, and all in nice nice condition not overly used nothing more so there is no power supply contained in this you put the user manuals aside and take a closer look at the computer This is the battery pack, rechargeable battery pack for Tandy 1400LT and this is probably a NICAD pack. So let's hope it has not leaked much. It has not, it actually looks kind of, of whole and there is no sign of, of leakage at all on this. And also inside here it looks, it looks okay. And that's nice and on the back here we have this flip cover for the ports and you have AC adapter here and they actually call this AC adapter and not DC adapter so that I have to look into they have this expansion slot that's blinded and they have this modem that's actually installed and you have the, the printer port you have the RGB output you have composite video, you have one serial port and you have one yeah, port for external disk drive and this is almost certainly a proper port for uh, this model and you have monitor on off probably to use the external monitor and you have a keyboard connector it looks like a standard XT or AT connector and what do we see on the bottom? Breaking seal voids uh, warranty. This is your service warranty. So this machine has probably been serviced and it's serviced in 1989. And 1989 for this computer was probably in the later life of this machine. I'm not sure. And this has a nice round serial number. I can zoom in on this label. 
it actually states here that this has 15 volt DC and just 700 milliamps and the model number is 25 3500 and the serial number is H high 000300 so this probably means that in this production run this was just the 300 and this is custom manufactured in Japan for Tandy UK a division of Entertain Canada LTD, Entertain Australia Limited and so on and that's probably just ownership of the branch of Tandy from, from UK. Here you have the, um, the carrying handle, you have a speaker here, you have the screws that you need to take out to open this uh, is marked with the arrows and in the front there is nothing and nothing and on this side you have the contrast for the LCD you have the on off switch and you want have one that's called internal external I don't know what that is but it can be you have the internal battery pack or internal or external power and it can also be for internal external keyboard or monitor or something but the monitor was on the back so that makes no sense we have to look into the manual afterwards and now for the moment of truth this is not the best angle for this camera but I, I will just uh, show you the basics here today this is a two floppy uh, model and these are probably 720k floppy drives you have a keyboard that's made to the American standard you have a, what they call the, a super twist not backlight LCD so this is a LCD with no active backlight and that's what why you have the contrast knob here to adjust so this will be readable in the light you have and this needs good light of course yeah this goes like so of course so this lifts up when you push it back then you will be able to get a good angle on this one and this keyboard is it's a membrane keyboard so hopefully it works and you have the caps lock num lock scroll lock standby and low battery light here this is kind of the ironic thing you have a low battery light as it lights up when you run out of battery it will be better to have the normal uh, power lamp just start to blink when you uh, run out of power then you actually will save some of the the juice that's left in the batteries we will just take a quick peek inside to see if there are some some other components that has leaked or is if there are some other things we have to consider before we try to turn this on there might be some difficulties with lifting out this lid because the LCD could be fastened so that it won't just lift right off. These rubber pads in the middle here is quite bad but the front ones is okay and in the back you have just these plastic feet. I wonder if there actually is a screw inside here, yes it is. And beneath this warranty void sticker that actually was punched a hole in. Yes, that was those screws. And let's see if we can lift this up. There might be some other trickery to this. There is no more screws, at least with arrows uh, pointing to them. You can see it lift up here in, in the back, but it's actually quite stubborn here in the middle, so that leads me to think that there might be some, some other trickery here that we have not discovered. There still are some stubborn mechanism behind this, and I'm not sure what it is, but I might have to go to the internet for help here, or I have to just look for more screws hidden beneath other stuff a practical guide to the um, 1400 LT let's see if this can give us some intonation of the enemy. 
battery pack again, probably the charging cycle of uh, NECADs. Features, IBM PC software compatibility, dual speed 4.77-7.6 MHz station bit V20 CPU and this is the 8088 compatible CPU that has instructions that are faster for each clock cycle than the original processor so it have a speed increase from 5 to 15 percent I think uh, varying on the kind of instructions and use of the machine. This is probably not where you go to to see how you can take this apart. But I do feel we have to try. This is a bit interesting because it states that it has um, a keyboard that is PC compatible. And that probably means that this is an XT kind of, of uh, connector. But it can be AT compatible even though it's an XT. So that we have to see does not stand uh, anything here about using it without the batteries but using the batteries you can operate the computer for approximately four hours under the following conditions uh, that all options are not installed that's extra cards and other stuff and the batteries are fully charged yeah and this we saw actually inside here there is a volume knob for adjusting the speaker volume and that's inside beneath the battery chamber Just some extra and troubleshooting guide and index. This is the quick reference guide, the MS DOS quick reference. I wonder what DOS it was that followed with this. It, it was so new that this was a 3 point something or it was a 2 0 oh something. This book is made in 1987 and the same with, with this, 1987. But you actually see here the Tandy 1400 LT Bio software, copyright 1984, 1985, 1986 Tandy Corporation and Phoenix software. So this is a Phoenix BIOS. But back to the Tandy. So. I have to do two things now. One is to get inside this machine to see if it's safe to turn it on. And the other thing I need to do is to make sure that I have a power supply that will supply this uh, computer with the right voltage. And it stated down here that it was 15 volt DC, but it's not stated here if this is a center positive or center negative plug. Back in the day there actually was a lot of power supplies that had center negative and, and not positive as it's most common today. I will take out these small covers here to see what's lurking beneath. small screws and this is the same with the modem and this is not really screwed in 100% this is just a dummy and I think there is a memory card slotted in on this side but this actually was a bit annoying so I will have to go and do a good search on the um, the internet to see what I can find about this. Yesterday I gave up on dismantling the uh, Tandy 1400 LT laptop computer and I went uh, inside to my computer and I actually downloaded the service manual uh, for the computer. And as you can see, I download this from manualslib.com. And they give a quick specification of the computer. It's nothing really special. It's the same that we saw in the manual we browsed through yesterday. But this is a really true out uh, service manual. And I mentioned it before. I really love this old service manual for these old computers. You can find everything in here. 
and it's a very good learning opportunity to learn how these old computers work both uh, hardware and uh, mechanically and here you have the view of the machine and you start with the PCB and the different PCB and this actually was the memory module that we could see inside the slot in the back and some more specifications and some notes about low battery and stuff and here comes the really important part the disassembly instructions for the top case and as we noticed yesterday there was some screw that was marked with an arrow and this is the screws that's marked here for removal but then comes the crucial part that we totally missed last night and that is that you around the, the hinge here have a top screw seal and you have a, a synced screw head inside here so you have to dismantle this piece before you can take the case off and that is probably because inside this plastic here there are a metal sheet that this is screwed into and then it's just about lifting the case it seems here like they flipped the lcd back on when they lift the case and that's probably possible and you have just one flat cable that's flexible and goes onto the main board from the top as it's seen here and this cable slides right out of a locked socket on the motherboard yeah the battery cover and rear cover that we have actually been able to remove before but here comes some more information and it's about the spring level that's connected to the hinge that we saw this this pivot on top of the the lcd where you could where this was spring loaded so that you can put the lcd in a more backwards position when you have taken that away you can actually remove the lcd from the whole case we have to see if that is uh, necessary we want to just get into the computer to see if there are some obvious faults to it and it might not be necessary to dismantle more than the, the top cover we, we have to see when we try to power this up hopefully this will will work and i also put the battery pack uh, on charge to see if it works Yes, this battery is rated for 12 volt and 2200 milliamp hours and as a rule of thumb on this you can charge it with 10% then you will use 10 hours to charge this battery under ideal conditions. This battery was almost totally dead so I started to charge this with about 11 milliamps and the way I do that is that I just connected here to my uh, power supply Oh, this is a bit bad this way it's connected, yes. I connect this like so to my uh, power supply. And then I just adjust my power supply, not by the voltage, but by the current. So now it states that this is going 0 0.2, that's 200 milliamps into this uh, battery. And I started real slow, like so, when... I uh, started this out till I get some charge on the battery and then I turned this up so that I ended up with having it about so for now it's been uh, about four hours since I uh, turned this on and I do think that if we take this battery now and measure it with a multimeter we will have some power in it so we can try just that and this is the screen of my Fluke scope meter and I will just now try to uh, disconnect the power supply and I will try to measure on this to see what voltage I get out of this battery now when it's been charging for yeah about 14 hours I think and it's 11.9 volt so I will leave this overnight this is probably the voltage you get if one cell is bad and that might be the case that one of the cells actually are bad but i will just continue to measure this overnight with about 200 milliamps of uh, charging current and we will see in the morning what the truth will be and the model i have is the, the ld model and that's uh, the first model there actually are a later model that's called fd 
or HD. And the difference between those are they are a little lighter and they removed some of the expansion options. And they have the possibility to have one of the um, floppy drives removed and a 20 megabyte hard drive instead. But my model is a twin floppy model. We won't go into detail on everything here. Maybe we uh, need to do that if we have to do some fault finding um, later. And there also are all the extensive timings and other stuff if we need to measure out something. But we really have to see how this machine actually looks inside. Every piece of circuit real-time clock, and this was what I was dreading, because here you actually have maybe a backup power battery, and what kind of battery that is, I'm not sure. Yeah, and here you have the power ratings for the power supply, and I still haven't found out if this is center negative or center positive, but that's an easy thing to uh, to measure. But they say that the nominal input is 15 volt DC, and at, as it is a 12 volt NICAD package, you of course have, have to some overhead for, for charging. So they said that the minimal input is 13.5 volt. And the maximum is uh, 20 volt. So there are some uh, leverage room in here. And I do have some power supplies in the range uh, 15 to 20 volt uh, DC that I can use on this computer. Yeah, and here is the dreaded backup battery. A uh, NICAD battery of 3.6 volt. That's used to hold the data time of the RTC. And that's the main reason that I want to get into this computer to see if there are some corrosion or battery leak before I try to turn this on. And here you have the, the troubleshooting uh, options with the, these nice flow charts for uh, troubleshooting. And this manual is actually 301 pages long, so that is something we are not going to read from page to page just to um, to check this computer but as i said this is a real great learning opportunity from for those who did not learn uh, about electronics in school and, or had uh, lived through the area where this kind of service manuals actually was the norm and not something that happened by a freak accident so i will read this more throughout uh, later but um, this is not the moment. We found what we uh, came to find. There is a NICAD battery backup inside. And, and we have learned how to unscrew the top cover. So that's it for this rather long episode without actually accomplishing much. But uh, there will be a follow-up on this uh, shortly. So thanks for watching and hope to see you uh, in the next episodes and please hit subscribe if you want to be notified. <music>